Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with your daily devotional. I love the book of Psalms. Right there in the middle of our Bibles, we find 150 ancient songs that express every human emotion. Um, they, they, they stir our emotions. They di- direct our will. The, the Psalms do. They inform the mind. Uh, they stimulate the imagination. And above all, they inspire worship. I love the Psalms for, for that. And I also love when I can find uh, someone else who has a common love for those ancient songs. And Tim and Kathy Keller indeed do. They've written this daily reader called The Songs of Jesus. And they just uh, reflect upon uh, uh, portions of each of the Psalms here in this book. I love their thoughts on Psalm 51 verses 10 through 13. And that's what I'd like to read for you today. Uh, Verses 10 through 13 of Psalm 51 first, and then the thoughts of Tim and Kathy Keller. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. You catch a glimpse of that prayer. It's just so multifaceted. Of course, David had a very complex life. And uh, as the king, just for being king, he had a complex life. But add to that here in this, uh, what's typically referred to as a psalm of confession, repentance, Um, He is acknowledging his sin, and his sins were great and uh, egregious, Uh, had an adulterous affair, uh, and uh, even arranged for the murder of of the woman's husband. Uriah was his name, and uh, just a horrible uh, thing to have gone through. And yet, coming before the Lord, being humbled and crumbled in many ways, and wanting to confess and pour out his heart honestly before God, wanting God to renew his spirit and give him a pure or a clean heart and not to dismiss him, not, not for God not to just send him off and reject him, but that the Lord would restore to him the joy of this beautiful salvation that God has offered uh, to you and to me as well. And then for David to just take the time and see that as a missional, that whole experience of his repentance, confession of sin, receiving of God's grace and forgiveness, and to see that as a missional thing. He says, then I will teach transgressors your ways. In other words, I'm going to teach other sinners what kind of God you are. You're the kind that's eager to forgive. You're the kind that... um, forgives even the darkest of our sins. Mm. And David says, so that sinners will turn back to you. And uh, I don't know where you're at today. Maybe it's time for you to turn back. Maybe it's time for you to return uh, to the Lord. Well, let's see what the Kellers have to say. I, I'm always sitting on the edge of my seat because they, they always have such great insight. Uh, Restore to me the joy of your salvation is a prayer that we should pray frequently, the Kellers say. The Bible commands us to rejoice in God. And um, they put a reference here, Philippians 4, for rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Um, This is a command not simply to have an emotion, but to remind ourselves in such a disciplined way about all that we have in Christ, that the greatness of it breaks in on our hearts. See, so it's not just, give me a J. It's not just give me a Jesus cheer kind of a moment to sort of, you know, pump up our emotions. No, no, no. It's rejoice in the Lord. Hmm. So he's the object of our joy. He's the source of of our joy and it's in our union with christ that we can actually find and experience his joy and he wanted that for you and he wanted that for me he told his disciples that he was he wanted his joy to be in them and for their joy to be full 
because it was his joy that was in them, see? In spite of the fact that they lived in a very dangerous time, and we live in a chaotic and dangerous time as well, don't we? But the desire of the God of the Bible is that you might know the joy of his salvation, and that I might know that as well, and that we might indeed rejoice in it. I love this. Mm. <clears throat> so he's, the Kellers say, um, as God breaks in on our hearts, then it, they say, it, it's a sin to be less than joyful about what God has done in our lives, uh, because that's to be dismissive of it. That's to say, no, God, you aren't really bringing me joy. No, God, you aren't really forgiving my sins. No, God, you really can't do that. See, we, we, need, we need to come and believe in the God of the Bible who reveals himself throughout the Bible, and especially in the Psalms we have this. This is what I love about the Psalms. Uh, uh, they not, uh, they're, they're songs of revelation and songs of response. Um, it was uh, the early church father, Athanasius that used to say that all of Scripture speaks to us, but the Psalms, not only do they speak to us, they speak for us. They give us the language of a proper response to God in whatever, we, whatever it is we're going through. And so here it's, we confess our sins like David did in Psalm 51, it created me a pure heart, oh God, renew a steadfast spirit within. We confess our sins. Don't cast me from your presence. We're, we're honest about how, all of that and how we feel. But at the same time, we can, we can say to God, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. I, I even pray to the Lord for the will to be willing <laughs> to go before him and confess my sins and to be sustained in that, to receive his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness. What a beautiful, this is so, so rich. Hmm. The Kellers say, furthermore, we cannot minister to others except out of our own joy. Our words will be hard, harsh, indifferent, or absent unless we are overflowing with the joy of knowing that we are God's precious possessions, bought at great cost. So say Tim and Kathy Keller, and I agree with them wholeheartedly there. You and I, sons and daughters of the King of the universe, um, you and I bought with the price of the blood of Christ. Every sin, past, present, future, paid for once and for all. Wow, that's something to rejoice about. Start this day with his mercies. They're new every morning, new every morning. Well, the Kellers close with a prayer and I'll close us out today with the same prayer. Lord, I don't want my heart to be too cast down by my disappointments and losses, but it is hard. Send your spirit to speak to my heart of the astonishing goods and glories I have and will have in Christ. Amen. Amen. Have a great one. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey. Thank you.